We're live in studio right now with singer and guitarist and songwriter Myron Elkins. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this is uh, this is real live. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so before we get into talking uh, and getting to know you better, uh, I think one of the best ways to get to know an artist is through their work, is through their music. So uh, we gonna play us a song. Cool. Yeah, this one here is called Ball and Chain. in studio with Michigan's own Myron Elkins. You just heard the song Ball and Chain from his uh, latest album, his debut album. Um, you know, I want to get a couple things out of the way with you right now, uh, some of the basics. So you're from the west side of the state. You're from Ostego, Michigan. Uh, you were trained as a welder, something I, I've been reading about a lot, something I read that you wanted to be from when you were a kid, and you're only 23 years old, too. Yeah, uh, well... <clears throat> I'd say uh, I never really uh, did very good in school at all. I wasn't really a troublemaker or anything. Uh, I didn't really uh, party or nothing. It was just I had a tough time ever trying to, uh, I guess, stay concentrated on something I wasn't really focused on or I didn't have much interest in. I feel like school really uh, tested that for me. And uh, by the time uh, high school rolled around, I didn't really have much uh, that I really wanted to do, honestly. Um and uh, welding uh, kind of showed itself to me, and I uh, I enjoyed um, uh, I guess kind of uh, old cars, and it, I guess welding does kind of have that art thing to it too, where you're kind of doing it, you're um, it's kind of creative, and uh, I loved music, but I think for a lot of people, uh, growing up, music isn't that isn't a career path, you know, that isn't like a uh, realistic um, endeavor at all especially where I was from you know nobody did music for a living that's insane so uh yeah uh welding seemed kind of creative and kind of uh uh accessible and realistic so that's where I ended up 
Yeah, I think a lot of people might be surprised by what you just said there, uh, you know, because there's, we have such a push to, you know, be who you are, you know, pursue your art, do these things. But when you grow up, you know, working class or blue collar, that's it really isn't something that you're even taught or talked about. Like, here's how you would do this. So I find uh, your story so cool and so fascinating because, you know, I've heard you talk about uh, in the media, like you, you will go back to welding eventually or you think about it sometimes still. Um, but you are really blowing up nationally in the country music scene. So I, I want to know uh, from where you're sitting, how are you feeling? How has it been like to go from learning to weld in Ostego to being discovered in Nashville, signing to Elektra Records and now releasing this debut album? It's, uh, <clears throat> it really kind of reassures on how unrealistic the whole thing is because it does seem kind of fake you know <laughs> and, and it still does even though it's real it's real stuff we're talking about um it's uh the only way i can really justify it or wrap my head around it is using the word luck you know uh we we definitely worked real hard uh studying music we love uh we love old school music they call it um with uh kind of more organic or uh, primal ways of recording. You know, all the soul singers, all the country singers, all the, I guess, from 60s to 70s music. Um, so we did all the work, you know. We we study, we still do, and we practiced until uh, we drop, and we still do, you know. Um, for me, personally, playing guitar and uh, holding a rhythm never came supernaturally. So the only way we could really uh, succeed or try to uh, catch up, I guess, was to uh, practice all the time. So that's what we did around working full-time jobs, and um, with a little luck, that Electra deal happened, and uh, we met we met some connections, and we just keep on flying by the seat of our pants, it feels like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah funny, you mentioned two things there. You're talking about just having this head luck, but you worked for it you're working really hard for it right now you're in the middle of like constantly touring at the moment yeah yep uh and uh like i said we just we're trying to take advantage of that as much as we can because uh especially with the entertainment business i don't know much about it honestly but it feels like you got your time and if you don't take off during your time you might never get back there again you know and, and i think you'll realize like the way i talk is kind of uh glass half uh empty kind of you know I think that just might be my mindset with stuff um uh, from where I grew up I, don't, I wouldn't call it like hillbilly or anything but kind of just realist you know very uh if anybody's been over to the west side of the state just cornfields and stuff like that so you know they are kind of I guess a uh, little bit redneck you know <laughs> and realist and just kind of uh uh straightforward people it's it's the Midwest nice, I think, right? It's the Midwest like work ethic and the Midwest like humility, I guess. Yeah, yep. yeah. Um yeah, absolutely. And a lot of people haven't told our story in a long time, the Midwest people. I I, I mean, uh when people bring up the Midwest, Heartland Rock comes up, which I wasn't aware of until we cut the record and they called it Heartland Rock. Uh I guess Heartland Rock is this genre, uh, like John Cougar and all those guys, which I don't really listen to, to be honest with you. Yeah, I guess it's Americana. I I wouldn't even I didn't really even know that term until you mentioned it here. I just yeah. kind of put you in country blues. Yeah, yes, you know? yeah, and I'm fine with that too. I'm fine with really anything. And as of lately, we've been kind of listening to funk and soul, and uh, I always classify as American music. Um, but I guess if you say it that way, that's discrediting Led Zeppelin or somebody, you know. So. Yeah, it gets complicated, right? But that all comes from the blues, <laughs> and that's, you know, American roots music. Absolutely. I mean, you can hear that in your music. Uh, you know, I want to talk about the influences. Uh, by the way, we're in studio live with Myron Elkins, uh, Michigan-born, Ostego-raised uh, uh, singer-songwriter, recently released his debut album, on Electra Records, it's called Factories, Farms, and Amphetamines. And also, I love that that your 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 story, at least you know, being a welder, you know, and being from the West Side State, where we do have those farms, worked its way right into the title. Yeah. of the album. <laughs> yeah, I think that comes from country music. Yeah. Uh, I grew up just loving country music, and uh, those country singers always told a really cool story. Um, and I feel like that's why I connect with soul music a little bit too, when they can kind of uh, like. For instance, uh, Pant Patches by Clarence Carter. It's a whole story, you know. And uh, when 
we were making this album, I'm like, I got to kind of describe home a little bit. That's the three things I could think of. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I want to get in the influences that, that are on this album because, you know, you mentioned the blues. I can hear some of the greats in there, Sunhouse and Lead Belly and, uh, you know, a little bit of Seeger, of course, uh, Almond Brothers. And, you know, on some of the songs, Nashville Money, one of them, you have a very, you know, funky, groovy bass line to it that definitely, to me, reminds me of some of the Funk Brothers a little bit, you know, yeah, yeah. from Motown. So, uh, you know, with all of that, you know, what really feels like the centerpiece of your music is, is your voice which feels obviously so much wiser and so much more experienced than, you know, what I would count for your 23 years here on this earth, right? So how did you discover you had this voice inside of you, this like very powerful, unique instrument? I'd say it started with, uh, again, country music, classic country music, uh, George Jones, Merle Haggard, Hank Williams. And uh, I tried to imitate them as much as I could uh, from the age of five. You know, Cash was another great storyteller and um i remember uh that stuff kind of burnt out a little bit into my early teens and that's where i met or found or got introduced to soul music and that's uh i started stealing from them we're talking uh etta james wilson pickett otis redding oh yeah um and i just felt uh there was this always underlying thing that I could, for me personally, I could connect with that old country music, old soul music, and it all went into rock and roll eventually. But I think the underlying thing that I could always feel with those people was soul. Yeah. And soul's such a hard thing to put your finger on, but I could hear that in Dolly Parton, I could hear that in Etta James, you know, and I could hear that with Wilson Pickett or Merle Haggard. Um, and uh, after I kind of gave up, I would say, or quit trying to imitate um, Merle Haggard and all those country singers, I felt naturally a little bit, um, a little bit of a home in the soul singer realm. Uh, so that's really where it comes from is just, I guess you could call it borrowing, you can call it stealing, whatever you want to call it. It's uh, it's influence, you know, from uh all of those classic American roots music stuff, you know? I think that's the artist's journey, though. It's like you're talking about this very archetypal sort of thing where you go out and you are grabbing these influences and, and, and pulling them toward you, and then at some point that alchemy kind of happens and you just are you who you are. You start making your art, right? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But I, I do always have a tough time figuring out where Ray Charles got his influence <laughs> because I feel like he really did kind of pioneer something. He was um, one of a kind, for sure. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> Otis Redding, um, man, nobody's sounded like him since, you know. Mm -hmm. So it is kind of, you could say that, but I feel like there was a golden era there for a minute where the, these were true pioneers for music, uh, and it kind of turned into popular music now, but um, that's who I can credit everybody with is those uh, that early work, you know. And I think that's where... The people that uh, that most people listen to and love, that's where they got it, too, is those pioneers. Yeah. We're in studio live here at WDET with Michigan's own singer-songwriter Myron Elkins. His debut album uh, came out earlier this year. Uh, it's out now on vinyl and CD. Factories, Farms, and Amphetamines is the title. And he's going to be playing at the Machine Shop in Flint coming up a week from today, uh, June 27th. So let's get to another song while we have you in studio. What do you got cool. for us? I'm gonna do the uh, the lead single on this uh, on our debut album here it was called Hands to Myself, and um, it's all about uh, domestic violence. Um, yeah, and it's kind of a story song. Okay. Well, yeah, you're scared. And I know that your eyes are swollen, your lips are thin. You, you can hide if you want, but I will win until I'm run. Just tell me and not disguise a plan to tell that man in the sky. You can hope, you, you can pray. Someone will love, someone will help 
and put you on some kind of shelf. Oh, I swear I'll never learn to keep my hands to myself. Mm -hmm. Time ain't your friend, and I hate to see you cry. Your lips split, and that's blood in your eyes. I, I can't go on. Loving like this With pain in my heart In my fist Lord, I hope you leave Before my brain goes I pull it as much Ran on my nose You can hope You can pray That maybe Someday Someone will love Someone will help and put you on some kind of shelf Oh, I swear I'll never worry Oh, I swear I'll never learn to keep my hands on my eyes Oh, yeah Keep my hands on my eyes While recording this, we took this verse out, and uh, being a country music fan, I had to have a cool little ending on it, you know, to kind of get back at the uh, storyteller. Well, she, he just left out the door, I'm laying face down on the floor, my blood on her hands, that's just fine. For revenge ain't no kind of crime Thank you so much. We're live in studio with uh, Michigan singer-songwriter Myron Elkins. Uh, he is going to be playing The Machine Shop up in Flint a week from today, June 27th. Uh, you can see him then. So I, 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 um, there's so much to talk to you about. I... Uh, and we only have a little bit of time left. So I want to get another song in, but there is so much to talk to you about. I was just reading a new article about you in Rolling Stone. Um, you've been doing tons of press and interviews since uh, your album came out uh, in January, right? Uh, yep. Yeah. I, I do want to ask you, what, as you're talking and doing these interviews and, and, and meeting new people and being on stations like this, what about your story do you think you'd like to tell that hasn't come out yet that, you, that people like me haven't been asking about? Well, you know, <clears throat> this probably don't sell many records or uh, make a lot of people tune in, but I had a good childhood. I had a good upbringing, and I think uh, <clears throat> my stories come from mostly other things I see. And uh, as I've done this and I've talked to more people, I think really uh, one of my big things is just the appreciation for this uh, American music we've talked about today, you know, like Ray Charles and... Uh, Merle Haggard and Jimmy Rogers and uh, Lead Belly, all these guys, man, they're they're truly just uh, uh, American icons and heroes. And uh, for artists everywhere, you know, I think they're just so so important. Um, so that's one of my biggest things is to give credit to where it's due. And uh, I think the other thing is to uh, <clears throat> keep my eyes open and my ears open and. Tr find uh stories throughout the uh my my kind of homeland you know and uh if i ever make it to europe or anything see what they got going on over there and kind of just putting that in song form right some stories country yeah. songs about europe yeah and i wish you know like all of these favorite people i was telling you about they did have crazy upbringings but for me uh i was fortunate enough and i'm not complaining at all just uh, uh and i still go home and see grandma and grandpa and mom and dad you know pretty close and pretty uh standard i guess yeah that's a part of country music though too right Fa like family and like yeah home, wanting to go home a lot <clears throat> yeah that is a that's probably a thing uh but a lot of the the greats like cash and uh merle they had very tough upbringings and kind of a lot of stories to tell personally and uh i've got a couple of those but nothing too uh nothing like five feet high and rising or uh, anything about labor camps in California, you know. Mm. Uh, so I'm just fortunate to have grown up where I where I did and wh where I'm from, 
And uh, I'd say my biggest message, uh, if not anything, is just to give credit where it's due and kind of tell tell people stories who might not um, be interested or not have the capabilities to tell it, you know? If you had one song you had to tell someone listening to listen to after this interview that that inspired you, that you think is, you know, absolutely so meaningful to you, what would it be? Who would it be? Uh, let's do, um, hmm, uh, Hank Williams Sr. Uh, he might be hard to get over if you're not a country music fan, but Hank Williams Sr., uh, from Life's Other Side. And it might be Luke the Drifter, which was a persona he made up in order to release his poetry. Uh, I just think it's uh, it's a good insight on the take of a artist and not a man. And uh, he, uh, he dives into pictures from a kind of a all, all angles of life, mm-hmm. from bad, good, you know, saints and sinners, all that. Hank Williams, you know, that's a good one for sure. Yeah, Hank Williams, man, he's the, <clears throat> he's uh, what made country music serious. <laughs> well, I, 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 in another throwback, I, I discovered your music very recently in the most, in the most Michigan way possible, in the most like old school way possible. Like driving up north with a friend to Ludington a few weeks ago, he pops in the CD and he's like, "You got to hear this guy." Really? All yeah, right. yeah. No so he Spotify. had a CD. He had a CD. Yeah, wow. he pops it in and he's like, and "I'm like, this is incredible." Nice. So that's kind of how this all all happened. So I'm so happy that you're here in studio with us. And again, Myron Elkins live here at WDET. You can uh, pick up his latest album, his debut album. It is out now. It's called Factories, Farms, and Amphetamine. Uh, he's going to be playing the Machine Shop in Flint, and I'm sure playing a lot of different places over the next couple years. Uh, if you want to check him out, Machine Shop in Flint next week. Let's hear one more song. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to do, uh, let me make sure I'm right here. We're going to do a uh, working man song or working woman song. I know this is, you know, got to be kind of resilient, I guess, today. And uh, yeah, this. Working man songs always help me get through my day, so I had to write one to record it. It's hard to make a living when the world keeps a slipping away. But you gotta keep the devil and the man with the level at bay. There's you been out of man to man secret. You gotta stay quiet, you gotta swear to keep it. It's hard to make a living when the world keeps a slipping away. Hey there, Mr. Breadwinner, you're so to the touch and can't afford your dinner. You all rely on the mighty breadwinner. Just a doing okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, just a doing okay. Mm. It's hard to make a living when the man's getting in the way. But you gotta keep your head when the stakes are a bed in a plane. Let you in on a man to man secret. But you gotta stay quiet, you gotta swear to keep it. It's hard to make a living when the man's getting in the way. Yeah. Well, hey there, Mr. Breadwinner. Twelve hours on a day, and you can't afford the city. You all rely on the mighty breadwinner. Just a doing okay. Oh, I just a doing okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just a doing okay.